Uh, this is a horizontal vector. This overall vector is horizontal, so it's parallel to the x-axis here. Please break this vector into components. Identify the components of this vector. Identify the components of this vector. As usual, I hope that you paused the video and gave that some thought. Now, at first, this might have seemed like a trick question, or you might have said, this has no components, because it's just parallel to the x-axis. Uh, but there really is a way to break this into components. There is a way to break this into components. What we would say is, we would say um, that the overall vector is just telling you the x component. This overall vector is just telling us what the x component is, which is 5. Now, let's be a little bit more careful, because we know we've got two different symbols for the x component. We have the magnitude of the x component, and we have the signed component. Now, this over here really doesn't tell us the signed component. Right? Because remember, generally overall vectors don't have signs. Um, so this just told us the magnitude of the x component. Now let's figure out the sign. Well, this vector is pointing to the right, and to the right is our positive direction. So here are two true things we can write about this vector. The magnitude of the x component is 5, and the signed x component is positive 5. The magnitude of the x component is 5, and the signed x component is positive 5. It really might be a good habit to write both of these things down about this vector. Ultimately, this is probably what we're more interested in, but this might be a good first step. Now, what about the y components? What's the magnitude of the y component? Well, 0. That's the way of showing that there is no y component. You can see there is no y component uh, for this vector. It's completely parallel to the x-axis. Um, there's no portion of this that um, is parallel to the y-axis, so the y component is zero. Notice that there's no way you can draw one of our right triangles here. You can't draw a right triangle here that uses this vector as the hypotenuse. Um, at least you can't do that if you also want the legs to be parallel to the sides. Remember that normally we draw a right triangle where the overall vector is the hypotenuse and the legs are parallel to the sides. Uh, well, what would, where would our hypotenuse be here? The hypotenuse would be this horizontal line. But one of the legs would also have to be the horizontal line, because horizontal is the x direction. Well, you can't have um, horizontal be both a leg and the hypotenuse. So to repeat that argument, um, if we were going to draw a right triangle here, we know we'd want to use the overall vector as the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse would be horizontal. But we also know that we want the legs to be parallel to these axes. So we'd also want a horizontal leg. Well, you can't have a horizontal leg and a horizontal hypotenuse. There's no way to make a right triangle out of that. So don't even try. Don't even try to draw a right triangle based on this. We can't make a right triangle um, that's going to break this into components. Of course, you could draw a right triangle based on this, but then the legs would not be parallel to the axis. So there's no useful right triangle that we can draw here. But fortunately, we don't need a right triangle because it's obvious that the x component uh, is 5, and it's obvious that the y component is 0. So we don't need the right triangle here. We can just obviously see that one component is 5 and one component is 0. When something is 0, there's not much distinction between the sign and the magnitude. The magnitude of the y component is 0, and the sign component is also 0. 0 doesn't really have a sign, so we don't need to say plus 0 or minus 0. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're using v dot y or vy, either way it's just 0. All right, now this was not just an academic exercise here. It's important to be able to identify uh, that the y component here is 0. When you're actually solving problems later in the course, um, for most problems, you generally need to identify an x and a y component, including for vectors that only have one component. Um, so this is a skill that you will need as the course proceeds. This is not um, just something that we did for fun here. This is a skill that you really need as the course proceeds, even um, if a vector only includes one component, so to speak. You still need to be able to break it into components. That just means that you're going to identify one of the components as zero. So, uh, as I was saying, this is a skill that you really will be using as the course proceeds. Also, I should say it's not that unusual to have a vector uh, that only has one component. So there's nothing unusual or weird about this example. This is a very standard example and type of problem, and you need to be able to be comfortable with dealing with this. Uh, this force vector is vertical. Here we have a vertical vector. Please break this into components. 
literally no x component. There's no horizontal component to this vector. It's all vertical. So it doesn't matter whether you're focusing on the magnitude or the sine component, they're both zero. That's easy. Uh, this vector is purely vertical, so the length of the overall vector is also the length of the y component. So the length of the y component is 3. The y component has a magnitude of 3. Now one thing that we don't get just from looking at the overall vector's number is now we have to figure out the sign. Well, this vector is pointing up, and we chose up as our positive direction. So I hope that uh, when you tried this problem, you used this notation. That is, I hope that you thought separately about the magnitude of the y component and the sine y component. Um, again, uh, again uh, I admit that this is not the exact notation that your instructors are going to use, but that's because they're so good they don't need this uh, notation anymore. But for a beginning student who's having difficulty with this material, um, it will really pay off for you to have separate symbols for magnitudes and sine components. That's one of the reasons why we're going through these problems, just to get comfortable with this notation. So I hope that you're attempting to do that. Remember again that if you're going to be review, uh, well, remember again, I hope that you'll be reviewing these notes, uh, but the notes will be ne meaningless to you unless you're writing down the positive direction for every problem. You should need to be writing down the positive direction for every problem. Uh, otherwise, it's meaningless when you say that the y component is positive 3. We don't know what positive 3 means unless we know what our positive directions are. Let's break this vector into components using these positive directions. Well, here's all the different things we have to figure out. I hope that you're, again, trying to use this notation that we've been developing. Um, now, this vector is purely horizontal, purely parallel or anti-parallel to the x-axis. Um, so um, the entire vector represents the x-component. So the magnitude of the x-component is 9. Um, but that's negative 9 once we consider the sign, because the vector is pointing to the right and the axis is pointing to the left. Positive direction is to the left, but the vector is pointing to the right. So this should be negative 9. I think this is a case where I would probably use a dot for the overall vector to emphasize that this 9 is just the magnitude of this overall uh, vector. Remember that um, it's a little bit of a toss-up whether you need to use a dot for overall vectors. Um, we know that we need two different symbols for the components. We need one symbol with a dot for the magnitude of a component and one symbol without a dot for the signed component. You don't really need two different symbols for the overall vector because, generally speaking, the overall vector doesn't really have a sign. Um, so you should do what feels comfortable. In this case, I think it feels more comfortable to say this is uh, the overall vector with a dot to emphasize this is uh, the magnitude here is 9. That's not really crucial, though. If you wanted to write a equals 9, I guess I can go along with that. Uh, again, the dot is more important when you're working with the components. Now, a sub uh, y is zero in magnitude and the sine component. There is no vertical component to this vector. And we indicate that by saying that these are zero. Let's break this vector into components. This is the overall displacement, and here we have the x displacement and the y displacement. Uh, well, here the displacement is all x, so the entire length of 4 represents the magnitude of the x displacement. Uh, what about the sine? Positive is to the right, but the vector is to the left. So that's negative 4. And there are no y components. The y component would have to be vertical, but this is purely horizontal. So again, I think this is the best way to work out the components here. And again, in this case, when the overall vector is parallel to one of the axes, maybe it's a little bit better to indicate more explicitly that this is just the magnitude, that this is just a magnitude over here. Uh, I, I don't think that's a big deal either way, but I'm going to show this is just the magnitude of the overall displacement. I don't think that's a big deal. 
It's very important, though, to always indicate whether you're uh, focusing on the magnitude or the signed number for the components.